Well, without further ado, uh, there has been much enough ado. Uh, everyone give big level 10 welcome to Esa Matisuranen. <laughs> Thank you. So, my name is Esamatti Suuron and I'm coming from Jyväskylä, which is... So I'm not quite local here in Helsinki, but not too far off, a little bit from north here. And here are the places you can see me on, on the internet. And this is the avatar I've used. So if you've seen this video game picture somewhere, that's me. And I work for Valo Digital OU and my day job is building developer tools. And I mainly work on findkit.com, which is like this toolkit for making search experiences for websites. So it's like a tool for website developers. But I also tend to build quite often JS libraries, and I will be talking about one today. But before we go into it, I want to talk a little bit about TypeScript. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of TypeScript. I, I actually think it's the best thing that has happened to web developers, maybe since jQuery, I think. But unfortunately, it's, it's not perfect. There are some caveats when you, you are using TypeScript. And even if you are using ultra strict modes and stuff like that, you still can get any types in your code from a bunch of places, like when you are making API calls, reading files, passing JSON, maybe even reading your database, you can get any types. E even though the code, code looks really good, there's like no explicit any, anywhere, no typecasts. And another one is like local storage. And there's um, what I call a feel good fix for those any issues. And that's like just defining the interface or, or the type you want to use and just putting it in in your code and boom you have the any type is gone you don't see it anywhere and all your coding is easy because you get auto completion and everything works right but this code of course has some issues because just using type like that it's basically a typecast which means if you for example in this case if you deploy a new version of your app, where you change the local storage settings format, so the, which means in, in the new version, it will load the old versions, version of the settings, and now you have mismatched types. You have different type going on, on runtime than what you have in TypeScript types. And this is how you get the undefined is not the function errors. And that's, this, is, this is sad because that, this is the reason why we are using TypeScript because we don't want to see that error anymore. And <clears throat> but there is some shit. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> press the wrong button. Do we have a solution for that? And I think we have a pretty good one and it's called Jod. This is not the first library like this, but I think this is like the most ergonomic one of them all. How many of you have used this one? Can you raise hands? Quite many. How many of you use TypeScript? Okay, I have something good for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so what Jot actually does, it allows you to define your types straight in JavaScript code. And you can actually use that as a parser and get the type version out of it. So you can actually infer the type from the JavaScript version of the schema definition. Mm. And how you would fix the previous example just by using, instead of using the interface, you'll use the JavaScript schema and just use that schema to pass the input data, which is in this case, any type of objects from JSON pass, and then you just pass it again with Jod and it will make sure that you have the real type. And this will actually draw an exception if the type doesn't match. Instead of having exceptions, you can also use safe pass version where you can actually use if statement to handle the type mismatch. 
if you like have to make some migrations or something like that. But how do we use Jordvit forms? <clears throat> because Jord can only work with um, plain JavaScript objects and the form element is not the JavaScript object or it is, but it's like very complicated one and we need the, like the plain one. So let's take a simple example. This is like a login form or sign up form and we make a small judge schema for it and build on that. So how do we get the plain object out of it? So here's a one way. We can just go through all the inputs in the form and build the object and run the judge schema on it. And boom, we have the properly typed object with, with us. But <clears throat> this is not really nice because there are like a bunch of edge cases in this code. There are like other elements that make the form data than inputs. So we have to handle those as well. But luckily, these days we have better solutions for this. New modern browsers, basically nowadays everything but IE has this form data API, which is actually an iterable, which means that we can actually use another new newish API from entries. And this way we can get the plain object out, out from the form. So we'll get the object we actually want from form like this. Please don't steal my password. And since we are using React, so how we can actually put this all together? <clears throat> we can actually just keep using the normal form. This is like the standard form component, nothing special on it. And we just hook into the submit handler. And on that, we get the access to the form DOM element which we can pass to the form data and use the previous code to actually get the proper parsed data out of it. And after that, we can just handle the error situation or just let it pass through, let the form submit, or we can, if we are using, making a single page app or something like that, we can just use fetch to send the data forward. And we use a little bit the React state. We put only the short error object in the React state. And this is the only state we actually need to use at this point. Because that's, that's the only way we can render the errors on, on the forms. Because we don't really track any form state in the <coughs> React state. So we need to just take the request state out of it we want to use in, in React code. So when I figured that out, I was thinking that, do I really need the form library anymore? We can, I just want to use Jord because that's what I use like in every project. But when I started thinking about forms more deeply, I realized that there's a bunch of other things going on with forms other than just validating that I have the correct data in the form. I actually need to make the form. <coughs> so, <coughs> but, Good thing about this code is that it's actually quite performant because we are not tracking syncing input states directly to any React state, which causes re-renders. So when we read it directly from the DOM element, we can just skip all the React renders. But there are, of course, things that go into creating forms other than validating. And here are a few of them, like we actually need to set the name attributes on the elements, render the errors, make, do some server-side validation, because of course you need to, you cannot just do the clients and stuff. Maybe we want to do nested fields, conditional fields, we wanna like put the checkbox in and render some other fields as well. So after th uh, thinking about this for a while, I came up with this library called React Charm which builds on this foundation, but tries to add only small helpers on top of it, which actually make building the form easier and type safe. So here's how it works. It's uh, basically a one hook you can import from, from the library. And 
you pass in a form ID and the schema. And this, uh, this function uses some type inference to actually figure out what are the available fields in the schema. And this allows us to still use native HTML components uh, like input elements, nothing custom here either. But we can actually write the <coughs> name attribute type safely. For example, here I made a typo on the password name field, <coughs> which it will tell us because it's type type error. And we can continue the same same idea for errors. So whenever the judge schema parsing fails, it's gonna like put the error in the React state, and after that we can use the same pattern to actually render the error on the form. If you look at the closer this error chain, it's actually using a render function. And this is actually rendered only when there's an error on the username field. So if there's no error, this doesn't render anything, it just returns no. So how about nested fields? How we can use them? It's basically the same thing. You can just just go through the nested fields and just use the property access and call the function at the end, and you will get the proper name attribute for your input field or whatever field. And same goes for the error rendering as well. So how this works? It's actually just generating a string like this, which is just passed into the <coughs> JSON object after, or just plain JavaScript object after that. And it's actually borrows some code from underscore or lodas. There's like this function called set, which actually can take a string like this and create the object from from it, which looks like that. And this is again something that we can pass on to Jod. And this actually supports infinitely nested objects and arrays, so we can create as complex form as we need to and still be type safe. And this, all, of, all these fields are like inferred from the Jod schema. So how about server-side validation? This, this example is from Remix, so this is this function is basically a post method handler, but it, React Storm doesn't really depend on any other framework. It's just using the browser APIs. And here's why, which is why we can use it with the Remix easily, because Remix is using browser APIs on the server side as well. So in Remix, if you, when you handle a form, you can get the form data object from the request object. And then we can just import pass form function from React Chrome, which is the same one it uses internally in the React hook. So we can get the <coughs> same validation on both sides. So we can use actually the same schema object on the server side and on the client side, which is really nice because it, then the validation is synced. You can get real time updates on the errors when you are using the form on the client side and it's actually validated to be the same on the server side when you are actually putting it into a database. And the reason why we are using the pass form here is just to support for the nested, nested objects. If you were just doing like a simple one level object, we could use the same form entries stuff I saw earlier in here as well. But if you are not using Remix and you have only JSON, it's actually even simpler. But you then just have to submit the form content using fetch manually. But in the, on the server side, then you can just use the schema pass directly on the JSON object written by the request. Well, how about server side only validation? Because not all validation can happen on the client side. So for example, if this is a sign-up form, we want to check 
that the username is not already taken and we cannot do that on the client side because some evil guy could like skip that validation by hacking on your client side code. So to solve this issue, use Charm provides this custom issues property and it takes basically a any JavaScript object which matches with the chart schema, I mean chart issue type, which is like path where the issue or the error happened and the message. And the, when we are using custom issues, it has, has to use the custom, custom key for that. <clears throat> and these issues, custom issues can be actually generated anywhere. You can create them on the client side, on the server side, and even, even in other languages, if you have like a Ruby on Rails app, you can generate this on Ruby code and just pass it on the client side and pass it to use Chrome and it will render the error on the correct field automatically. But since we are talking about type safety, this is not good, very good yet because this doesn't actually do any type checking. You can put in whatever on the paths. So for that, there's a, another helper called create custom issues, which takes in the schema object and again uses type inference to ensure that you are using correct keys. And it works pretty much the same as the other chaining objects. So you just call the function at the end to add an issue to the issues object. And so this is again the server side handler. And then we, at the end, we just return an array of the issues. And then on the client side, we just pass it to the use Chrome hook. And we, we get the username is not available error on the username input field, which is nice. And <clears throat> in this code, this is a remix APIs, if you're not familiar, it's just returning the data from the server side. What about, but what about third party red components and the custom UI? Because as, as I said earlier, we are not tracking any, any input states in, in React, which means that when we, <clears throat> which means that we don't actually see the form data in the React side of things and the other way around, uh, React Chrome doesn't see any React state. So if you have like, let's say React Select, which doesn't use input elements at all, it just uses some custom things. So how, how, do, I, how do we put the data form like this to React Chrome or in general in any in, in form? This is not, not like React Chrome APIs, it's just forms. So we need to put the data in the form. <clears throat> so in this example, we have a schema with colors, array of strings, and then we use the React Select component, and we add a little bit helper state here, where we have the array of colors and set a function for that. And just to, when we want to put the data on the form, but we have another UI for it, we need to use hidden inputs. So we just go through the colors and create hidden inputs and use the fields chain to actually generate correct name attribute so we can pass it to the object on the left. And this works basically for anything. You can create any plain JavaScript object like this. So you can adapt any, any component, whether it's some third party or your custom one, to actually any, any form. It doesn't have to be even reacting or react form thing. Uh, well, how about custom uh, conditional fields? Because again, we come up with this issue that what if we want to like add, add some advanced fields, some settings form, and you want to put checkbox in when you want to like show, the, show those fields. But again, when the state is only in the form and not in the React, we need to somehow actually read those specific fields in, into React state. And for that, we have a hook called useValue, 
which takes in the drum object and the name of the field we want to actually read. <coughs> and this uses the same fields chain, so the type checking is going on here as well. And this, this actually uses internally the React state. So this is where you can actually break the performance. But the thing is that this is opt-in. You, you only use this when you really need to, and everything is by default, not tracked. So a small recap, <coughs> we don't track input state, states by default. We validate the form values directly from the form element and not, not from any React thing. We can use just schemas everywhere in the browser and the server. And from the judge schema, we can infer some type safety to name attribute generation, error rendering, and server side is to a generation as well. <coughs> How about other frameworks? Since the code in this library is not actually very reactive even, it's only one hook that actually just gets the form element and works from that. So it should be actually quite easy to port this library to other frameworks like Solid or even web components maybe, who knows. So if this seems interesting, you can ask me, come and ask, so we can figure out how to, how to actually implement this in other frameworks as well. Check out the readme, there's like a bunch of examples and some patterns how to, how to use this library. And, and, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach me out on Twitter or in the Q&A session afterwards. And I really actually like to hear some questions, how to like use this in some specific situation because there's not that many, that much API in this library, but I think there's like patterns you can use to actually create the, handle the more complicated situations just using this API. Thank you.